Now for case three, under the topic of renal tumor pathology, we have a 50-year-old male with a renal mass. So from low magnification, what we see here is a very distinct hypercellular blue appearing tumor with a very sharp border from the surrounding renal parenchyma. And from this magnification, you can make out these papillary-like structures. On closer inspection, once again, you can see these papillary structures. Some of them have thin fibrovascular cores, others more of a fibrous or collagenous matrix. The tumor cells are relatively uniform. It looks to be an epithelial neoplasm. We've got nuclear enlargement. We've got some nuclear overlap. And for the most part, you can't really make out much in the way of cytoplasm within these tumor cells. Also notice here on the edge of the tumor, we've got somomatous calcifications, and these are essentially a form of calcium deposits that have these laminations or circular arrangements. One other point is that we do not have foamy macrophages within these fibrovascular cores, and that'll help us in our differential diagnosis. Here's another area of the tumor that has a different look to it. Instead of the papillary-like structures, we have these little circular arrangements of tumor cells forming what you might call a rosette or a pseudo-rosette. A rosette is essentially a structure where tumor cells form a lumen. We're not really seeing lumina within most of these structures, but it's definitely a distinct look to the tumor. Notice once again, we have some pleomorphism. Some of the tumor cells have larger nuclei than others, but overall it's relatively uniform. The chromatin pattern is marginated, but not particularly coarse and clumpy. We're not seeing much in the way of nucleoli. Again, as noted before, there's minimal cytoplasm within these cells, which, which is what gives it that blue appearance on low magnification. We can see these circular arrangements or rosette-like structures. But notice we're not seeing, number one, we already mentioned, we're not seeing prominent nucleoli. And number two, we're not seeing mitotic activity. Here is another area of the tumor with a slightly different look. Here we have more of a collagenous background and abundant calcifications that have the appearance of somoma bodies. Now, as we go through different areas of pathology, you'll, know, you'll notice that somoma bodies are not specific for any particular tumor type, but they are certainly found more commonly in tumors that have papillary architecture. And the way I view it is tumors that have somomatous calcifications, it usually implies that that tumor has been sitting around for a while, so it's relatively slow growing. Here is a closer view of a somoma body and the characteristic features. So these, there are two types of calcium deposits that we see in, in anatomic pathology. There's calcium phosphate and there's calcium oxalate. Calcium oxalate is more of a clearish crystal and calcium phosphate has this more basophilic appearance. So this is a calcium phosphate deposit that has distinct laminations like rings on a tree. One additional pattern that we see in this tumor is this area where we have more tubular structures that fan out amongst these smaller tubules. Immunohistochemical stains were performed on this case, but I'm not going to show them to you because it'll give it away. We'll talk about it here in a minute. But I would say your main differential diagnosis based on the architecture is going to include one of the more common tumor types, which is a papillary renal cell carcinoma. And also within the differential, particularly based on that sharp border the tubular structures, the high NC ratios with the bluish cells is going to be a metanephric adenoma. Now, immunostains can help. The diagnosis in this case is metanephric adenoma, so let's talk about metanephric adenoma. As is implied by the term adenoma, these are benign tumors. The metanephric portion of the name refers to the recapitulation of early embryonic development Essentially, the tumor recapitulates the formation of metanephric tubules. These are also known as embrinal adenoma. The term embrinal for us within pathology generally refers to tumors that have a primitive appearance or a blue cell appearance. These can manifest at any age, but they're more common in females, so that's a little bit different than the typical clear cell type that we talked about previously. 
They're usually found incidentally, but they can present with hematuria. Polycythemia is seen in around 10% of cases. Grossly, you'll notice that it has a pretty sharp border between tumor and kidney. Unlike the picture that we saw of the clear cell renal cell carcinoma, it lacks abundant hemorrhage and necrosis, and it doesn't really have that yellowish appearance, although it's slightly yellow in that one corner. These tumors have a characteristic, very well demarcated or sharp border between the tumor, which has a blue appearance, and the normal kidney. Typically, they lack a fibrous capsule. There's different patterns like we saw in our case. We've got the tubular arrangements. We've got a more fibrous or myxoid background with somoma bodies. And also papillary-like structures. Now we say papillary-like because many of these actually lack fibrovascular cores, so they're not true papillae. But as you saw in our case, you can have true fibrovascular cores. Now what does help us here is that they lack foamy macrophages. And why do we mention that? Because in our differential diagnosis is going to be a papillary renal cell carcinoma. And based on the low-grade nuclear features, in particular, the differential is going to be a type 1 papillary renal cell carcinoma. And the type 1 papillary renal cell carcinomas have very characteristic appearance with foamy macrophages within these papillary structures. The immunostains that were done in this case match this. It is positive for WT1, which is a Wilms tumor antigen, and also positive for PAX2, which is, tells us that it's primary to the kidney. It's negative for cytokeratin 7. That's also very useful because papillary renal cell carcinoma, particularly the type 1, is positive for cytokeratin 7. It's also negative for racemase, which is positive in papillary renal cell carcinoma, and it's negative for CD56, which is positive in a Wilms tumor, which is, should also be included in the differential diagnosis. So let's talk about the main differential. Number one, papillary renal cell carcinoma typically has a capsule. It will generally have more abundant cytoplasm, so it will not have that blue cell appearance from low magnification. And they generally have prominent nucleoli. Papillary renal cell carcinoma, as we mentioned, is positive for cytokeratin 7 in racemase and negative for WT1. A Wilms tumor that is epithelial predominant would also be in the differential, mainly if you're dealing with a more childhood age tumor. In an adult, a Wilms tumor is going to be much less likely. Wilms tumor also has a capsule. Wilms tumor is a high-grade malignancy, so you're not going to generally mistake it for a metanephric adenoma. It'll have frequent mitoses, necrosis, and other features that point towards malignancy. A Wilms tumor is similarly positive for WT1 and is also positive for CD56. CD56 is negative in the metanephric adenoma. So this ends the video for case 3.